Hi, I'm Dr. Tan Eng Guan, consultant pediatrician from Lam Wai Hospital, Penang. Today, I'll be talking to you on a topic called protecting our children from COVID-19. The question is whether we are doing it the correct way. We have been in the midst of pandemic since year 2000, March of the early March of year 2000, and yet many of us since have not learned the proper way to protect our children. We still are not sure of the mask that we should buy, whether we should wear a face shield, what alcohol solutions we should use as a hand sanitizer. So in today's topic, I'll be covering a few topics which will lead you to a better way to prevent transmission of COVID-19 to our loved ones. Now, this is the picture, it gives you a visual idea of how small a coronavirus is. Now, the coronavirus it is a droplet infection. It is not an airborne infection. It is because of the fact that even though it's so small, it has to sit or combine with the secretions from our nose or from our mouth, and it makes it heavier and bigger than it is actually. Now, the coronavirus is actually only 0.1 micron, but in order to be a droplet infection, it mixes with our secretions, it becomes a bigger entity, it becomes a, maybe a 0.3 or 0.4 microns. So this coronavirus is easily, what I'm trying to say that even though it's small, it's almost as, uh, if you compare to the red blood cell, it's so much smaller than the red blood cell, it's also smaller than the, 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 the bacteria, but it is able to be filtered out by surgical masks. So there's one thing that I want to leave you with in this picture. Now the question is, um, why do we use masks? Which mask is better, whether it's uh, medical or cloth mask, which gives a proper protection, and what other things that we can do to protect ourselves against transmission of COVID-19. So in due course, Throughout through the through the talk, we will be covering all these topics and hope to get a better understanding after listening to the talk. Now, knowing your mask, basically the mask is to protect yourself and everyone around you. The mask actually will help prevent the transmission of COVID-19 and if you use it correctly. Now, basically the, the mask that we are very familiar with is the respirator mask which is the N95 mask. Now, N95 mask is basically more reserved for frontliners and health workers. But N95 mask now, the equivalent of N95 mask now is flooding Malaysia uh, in the form of KN95 and KF94. Now, each country has their own respirator mask. They make their own respirator mask, like such as Japan, uh, Korea, China, Germany and Australia. But the other masks we are not very familiar with because they are not imported into this region. Now the other masks that we are usually used to is the surgical mask, which is a single-use disposable mask. Now the, uh, and the third is the cloth mask, which we can use uh, yeah, and uh, it is washable and reusable. And of course, those people who do not use masks at all. Now, the quality of surgical or respiratory masks actually basically differs from country to country. Each country sets their own uh, standards of uh, testing. In China, they have their own way of testing and the China conforms to the YY0469, while the US, uh, they conform to the ASTM standards of level 1, 2 and 3. The Malaysian um, masks actually in order to, to be exported to European and US countries, uh, they, should, they need to conform with both the US ASTM and European EN14683 14683, uh, testings. So the level 2 and 3 uh, of US or type 2 and 3 basically means level 2 or type 2 is 3 ply, level 3 and Type 3 is 4 ply. So these are the, the, the face masks that actually we should buy. 
Now, the respiratory masks basically um, they are from either US, China, Europe, Japan, and also uh, Australia. They have their own uh, respiratory masks. But what we can get in Malaysia is basically uh, more of the N95 or KN95. Of course, N99, KN99, and N100 and KN900, as you can see, uh, they are, the filtration is better uh, which uh, we, uh, as you compare the different types, it becomes a higher filtration. But uh, basically, uh, we are more familiar with the N95 and KN95. Now, what is three ply mask? Three ply implies three layers of protection, with, uh, which is provided by three different materials. Now, the outer material is a non woven layer which filters large particles. It is usually waterproof. Now, how do you know that it's waterproof? Usually, you can put a drop of water, and if the water becomes a bead and it doesn't penetrate through, means it doesn't penetrate through, through the first layer, so it is waterproof. Now, the second layer is an electrostatic absorption meltdown cloth which filters tiny particles and bacteria and viruses. Now, how do you know that this is not just plain paper and it's a meltdown cloth? You can use a lighter and light it up. If it's a paper, it will burn easily. And of course, the third layer is basically an anti-allergic, soft, non-woven layer, uh, which is skin friendly. Now, these three layers actually protects by filtering 99% of the bacteria, which is 0.1 micron in size. Now, this particulate filtration protects you against dust, bacteria, allergens, chemicals, smoke, as well as viruses. Now, you may ask me why uh, 0 0.1 micron. This, you have shown me in the first slide that the coronavirus is actually 0 0.1 microns in size. Yes, it is. But you have to remember the coronavirus is not an airborne virus. It is a droplet virus. What it means by droplet virus is that the virus settles and mixes in our uh, saliva and also nasal secretions. And when it mixes, it becomes a bigger particle is no more 0 0.1 micron, it is 0 0.3 microns. So this 3 ply mask can actually filter out it easily. Now, a lot of people ask me, what is a good reliable mask? A good reliable mask is the mask that which is made in Malaysia. Now, a lot of people know that most of the raw materials that goes into making a mask is actually imported from China. But no doubt, the, the, the Malaysian masks are more reliable and more trustworthy is because they conform to many standards set by either European or US uh, testing, uh, testing facilities. Now, as, as you see, at the top part of the box is glass-free fibres. Now, glass-free fibres, when you breathe in glass-free fibres, in certain, which is, uh, which is there in certain uh, surgical masks, which is, it is not good, it will cause trauma to the lung. Now, the local nation made masks are more breathable, and the local mask has both of a bacterial filtration efficacy of 99%, particulate filtration efficacy of 98%. And um, as you can see, if it's a medical mask, and a medical grade mask, or it was, there will be a stamp called medical device. Now, it complies with, when it complies with the medical device, there it will be a medical device with registration number, as you can see at the, uh, in the box. And they usually have certain conformation to European and also US uh, standards. Uh, as I spoke to you earlier, as I showed you earlier, the European standards are EN and the American standards for surgical masks is ASTM. Now, the level 2 or level 2R are basically denotes that this mask can filter viruses. So this is called a three-ply mask. Now, what are the differences between N95, K95 and K94? Now, these are respiratory masks. They are not surgical masks. They uh, have better seal. And if you note that uh, the 3M N95 is the pioneer, of all the respirator masses, and uh, this uh, head loop N3 3M is uh, N95 is head loop, whereas the K94 and uh, K94 
KN95 is ear loop. Now these are basically KN95 and KN94s are basically the answer to 3M made by different countries, KN95 from China, KF94 from Korea. Now, now a lot of people ask me whether KN95 can compete with N95, which is better, or is it same or superior? Now the question is, we can answer it through quality and testing. Now the N95 and KN95 on paper shows a filter performance of 95%, more than 95% for both, with using a flow rate of 85 liters per minute. Now they noted that the in KN95 they actually do a leakage test by placing the mask onto the face to see whether it's leakage test. It's actually very negligible. It's less than 8%. Whereas in N95 uh, they don't do that. And the inhalation resistance is almost the same. So on paper, they look pretty good and pretty alike. Now, N95 is approved by NIOSH as a respirator, whereas KN95 has not achieved NIOSH approval, so it's only used as a face mask. Now, a lot of people say that KN95 is equivalent to N95. Now, because of N95, it's only in, in the States, it's only given to frontliners like doctors and nurses. The local people do not get N95. So a lot of people resort in importing cheap products of KN95 from China. They have basically furthered the KN95 into the US market. Now, noted that uh, the US do not Note, they note that a lot of the KN95s do not actually, uh, the quality does not conform to, to, the, uh, to them as a respirator. A lot of them say the filtration is, may not be 95%. Some say it's only about 88%, some say 40%. So it fails to actually live up to their standards of a respirator. So a lot of them are fixed and they flooded the US market. So US has stopped. Uh, the imports of KN95 into the United States. So that is the reason why recently we see very cheap KN95 uh, in our nation shores through uh, the marketing platforms of Lazada and uh, Shopee. So these, they can be as cheap as a dollar to a three dollars, so a three ringgit, sorry. So um, you've got to be a bit careful when you choose KN95 because they may not be the real deal. Now, are all fabric and cloth masks constructed the same? Are they superior? Which is more superior? Now, of course, a three-ply fabric mask is the best uh, compared to a single layer type of cloth mask. Now, the three-ply fabric face mask is constructed by using tightly woven breathable fabric. Now, these fabrics comes in three layers, as in uh, three-ply implies. The first layer is actually a semi-waterproof layer, which prevents uh, secretions seeping through. The second layer is a filter, filter layer, which has a filtering function. The third layer is actually a cotton layer to make it comfortable when you wear it. Now, the three-ply fabric mask should have a nose piece wire, which holds it up when we wear it. It also should conform to the light test. This, what I'm saying is that you take the cloth mask and you put it onto the bright light. We should not see the bright light through the mask. So this is a well-constructed mask. Of course, in Malaysia, there are a few masks which uh, boast uh, uh, more qualities like impregnating of, or uh, uh, impregnating nanotechnology, nano ionics, silver and nano ionic copper which apparently kills COVID on touch. Now another good face mask, 3 ply face mask should not have a valve. Can you see the top part where the girl is wearing? That is the exhalation valve. Now this valve is, although there's a filter in between the valve and the face mask and the face of the big girl, this is an exhalation valve. This exhalation valve 
should not be worn because exhalation valves makes the child breathe easier. Air can enter easier, but you have to remember through the valve, although the air that it filters through the, in, through the valve is good for the child, but when the child coughs or the child is ill, when he coughs, the droplets will actually flow out through that valve. So for Malaysia, fabric masks or even surgical masks should not have a exhalation valve. Now, what are the steps and do's and of and don'ts of wearing a mask? Now, before wearing a mask, you have to clean your hands thoroughly, either by washing or using a hand sanitizer. Inspect the mask for damage and if it's dirty, reject the mask. Of course, wear the mask and adjust it so that there's no gaps in between the, your face and the mask which may be a potential entrance of droplet infections. And then the mask should cover fully your nose, your mouth and chin. Then once you wear it, you should not touch it until you plan to take it off. Now, before taking off the mask, clean your hands again with sanitizer or if you can wash your hands before that. Remove the mask by holding onto the straps from behind and pulling it forward. Take the mask away from your face Place it into a ziplock plastic bag. Uh, if you want to, if it's a, if it's a surgical mask, you can throw it into the dustbin, a clean sterile dustbin. Or if it's a washable mask, you can put it into a clear plastic bag and seal it. Then take it home immediately by after reaching home, take it out by holding the strap, immediately placing it into the hot water and detergent, uh, and soaking it preferably a day and then subsequently washing it after that and drying it and you can reuse again. Now most of the, the fabric masks that we have in Malaysia uh, boasts of 50 to 100 washes. So you can use it for 50 to 100 times uh, for all the three ply three masks uh, available. Now, the CDC actually advises us on using double masking. Now, a couple of weeks ago, uh, a couple of months ago, uh, the Ministry of Health through their CDC recommendation has actually recommended double masking. Now, what is double masking basically means using two masks instead of one. Now, two masks is more superior in the sense that it filters more particles uh, and improves filtration of uh, filtration function of a mask. Now, what is recommended by CDC is by using a surgical mask inside followed by a second outer layer of a cloth mask. The reason of a cloth mask is because the surgical mask has a lot of gaps in between. Uh, and uh, if uh, because of the gaps, there are potential entrance of droplets uh, and hence COVID may be entering your surgical mask through the gaps. So by wearing a second layer, which actually uh, sort of pressures and closes up the gaps, of the surgical mask by using a cloth mask, a tight cloth mask. This actually prevents and increases the filtration uh, efficacy, efficiency of the surgical mask. Now, a lot of people say whether should I use just a three-ply mask, a three-ply fabric mask, or a single fabric mask, a single layer fabric mask. Actually, I would prefer a three-ply facial mask, a facial fabric mask. But a lot of people say it is very difficult to breathe. So it depends on individual then. But as long as you use double masking, uh, an outer mask of a cloth, an inner mask of a surgical mask, it should be good enough. Now, CDC actually strongly discourage the use of two surgical masks as a double masking, or two cloth masks as a double masking, or using N95 with another mask either a surgical mask or a cloth mask. So what is good is a surgical mask and a, and a plus a layer of fabric mask outside. Now, a lot of my patients complain that their children do not like to wear masks. I think as adults, how do we actually encourage them to wear the mask is actually by wearing the mask, our mask properly ourselves as parents. So we should wear the mask together with the child. So the child will look at us as a mentor. The second thing is that to let the child be in control means don't force the child to wear the mask. Let the child be perhaps use the mask on her doll. When he uses the 
the, the mask on the doll, ultimately being the caregiver of the doll, the child will be compelled to use the mask themselves. Now another thing is that if your child is finds it difficult to wear a surgical mask, don't force them to get immediately use a surgical mask. What you can do as parent, you can ask let the child use a single layer cloth mask first with a face shield. So subsequently, when they are getting, they get used to the fact that they are wearing a mask, and uh, and they get used to the fact that they are, they can breathe through that mask. They can actually substitute for a surgical mask later on. Now children like colorful things. They like to be in control of what they do onto the mask. So you can uh, let the child write their name on the mask. You can uh, let the child choose the color uh, and design the mask. And some of them you can actually design the mask itself. So a surgical mask can be designed and colored by the child. So these would actually let the child be more receptive of wearing a mask. Hi, what is a good face shield? Now a good face shield basically is made of transparent material which is rigid but not breakable. It should be transparent it should be non-fogging. It should cover the entire face of the child from the forehead up to the chin and should cover the sides of the face so there's no chances of droplets entering through or touching the contaminating the face of the child. Now a good face mask, face shield should be able to protect the public if the child coughs or sneezes. Uh, and because why the droplets will be laterally displaced and would be uh, vertically displaced downwards so it doesn't go forward and horizontal so it doesn't spread forward um, it also prevents uh, the child from being contaminated by uh, droplet infections or droplets from sneezing or coughing adult individuals or uh, so it works vice versa. For a child who he has is bigger than two years old, I would actually advise a surgical mask, wearing a surgical mask with the face shield. But if a child is younger than two years, a face shield would be sufficient. Now, why should we avoid face shield in infants? Now, in infants, they actually have difficulty in breathing if you put a face shield over their head. Now the oxygen levels may drop for these infants and may cause some damage to the brain. Now for children who use hard, why we avoid using hard shields or goggles in children, children is because that though hard shields and goggles may look firm and rigid, it is also very dangerous especially for children who tend to to walk and fall or run and fall and may break this uh, shield and it may cut their face or even worse splinters of this plastic may enter the eye. So it's always good to use a soft plastic type of non-breakable uh, material when it comes to shield. Now I do not encourage children to wear gloves when they go out. Although children tend to touch surfaces of things and touch it, touch things when they go out and buy things in supermarkets and all that we do not actually advise you to use gloves because gloves gives you a false sense of security but what i mean here is that when we wear gloves we think that it's clean it's sterile but you've got to remember when we touch things it becomes contaminated by formites now what happens is that we because we wear gloves we tend to forget that uh, the gloves is on we tend to touch our face and we tend to transmit the COVID-19 to our uh, and contaminate our face mask. Now the second thing is that when we wear gloves, we do not use hand sanitizers as often. If we think and because of the false sense of security. Now you think that the gloves is protecting our fingers and hands, but you've got to remember that that is not that what we want to be protected. What we want to protect is that. The fingers should not touch the nose. So the third thing is that when we wear gloves, we when we use hand sanitizers, there are nooks and crannies in the gloves that do not touch, or the surfaces do not touch, is not touched by the 
uh, hand sanitizers. So we tend to use more hand sanitizers when we wear gloves uh, and to clean the same surface if we use uh, hand sanitizers by using bare hands. Second thing is that when we use hand sanitizers in the gloves, it doesn't clean all the nooks and crannies on all the surfaces of the gloves. So some COVID uh, virus may settle into these areas and when we are not careful, we can touch and then transmit it into our face mask. Now, there are a lot of uh, studies say, saying uh, which is better, hand sanitizers or soap. Now, the CDC actually advises us to wash our hands using soap as often as possible. If by using the proper hand washing technique of 20 seconds, we actually kill most of the COVID uh, viruses. Now, when you wash, dry and rinse and scrub uh, by, by using water and soap, you actually kill off most of the COVID, uh, COVID uh, viruses. Now, is there, a, is there a superior or is it better to use an antibacterial soap such as uh, perhaps uh, uh, Dettol or just any soap? Now, in actual fact, the surfactant in the soap actually breaks the, the fatty layer of the virus cell wall. So it doesn't mean that it has to have a back, uh, antibacterial properties to be more useful. So any soap is better than just water. Now, we'll be talking next on sanitizers. Now, the CDCs actually advise everyone who goes out to have on their, on their persons um, hand sanitizers. So they'll carry hand sanitizers around. Now, each time they touch a surface, they sh the hands should be sanitized. Now, the hand sanitizers, the ideal hand sanitizers should have active products uh, of alcohol, but not at all alcohols are uh, indicated. The alcohol that uh, the CDC advises to be an active ingredient of a hand sanitizer with ethyl alcohol, 65 to 60, 60 to 65 percent, isopropyl alcohol of 70 to 75 percent, or benzalkonium alcohol. These alcohols actually can penetrate and kill and break down the cell wall of the virus, hence killing the virus on touch. Now, a lot of the hand sanitizers have added other, added, uh, added, other ingredients. Now, the first ingredient that they add on would be uh, to denature the alcohol. Now, in essence, alcohol smells good and tastes good. A lot of the children tend to, when exposed to this alcohol, they will tend to drink the alcohol. Now, when you denature the alcohol, the alcohol becomes bitter. So there are less chances of uh, the child being exposed to alcohol poisoning. Now, the other alcohol that we do not want to use is called the wood spirit or the methanol or methyl alcohol. The methyl alcohol is toxic when exposed to the skin and also ingested. So methyl alcohol, again, another disadvantage, it does not actually denature the uh, COVID-19 cell wall, hence it does not kill the COVID-19. So what alcohol is good? Basically, is ethyl alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. Now, a lot of the other alcohols, sand sanitizers, have other added uh, ingredients. Some may add um, a citric acid, uh, some may add um, moisturizer, some, some may add uh, this, uh, some moisturizing oil. Or, it, uh, or aloe vera, but basically the con active content has to be uh, uh, ethyl alcohol, isopropyl alcohol. So when you buy hand sanitizers, please check the active ingredient. The other ingredients are added on. It is okay, but the active ingredient must be ethyl alcohol or isopropyl alcohol. Now what about using air purifiers? Now the CDC actually advises us to use air purifiers air purifiers has a HEPA filter. The HEPA filter actually is very efficient in filtering out uh, particulates, uh, which is uh, 0 0.3 microns in size. Now, you have to remember that uh, the COVID-19 uh, uh, are basically a virus which is about roughly about 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 microns. Now, these uh, HEPA filters can actually filter it out. Now, CDC found that Using uh, the HEPA filter or HEPA air purifier in schools, they actually reduce the incidence of COVID uh, transmission, transmission in schools. 
So we can advise you strongly to use HEPA filter purifiers either in schools, offices and also our homes with or without UV light. Now, uh, so actually we have come to the last slide and uh, I hope with the sharing you are more aware of how to prevent COVID transmission in your house and to your children. And I would like to leave you with the last slide, a uh, pictorial cartoon picture of what is the essence of prevention of coronavirus. Uh, and hence, I'd like to also to say, uh, take care, stay safe and stay home. Till the next uh, YouTube or Facebook live, uh, bid you goodbye and stay safe.